I feed my personal dogs Munster Milling Custom Kibble for several reasons. I like to make sure that my dogs have the best of the best every chance I get, and Munster is simply unbeatable. Munster partners with local farmers to use local ancient grains, and these are free of gluten and other inflammatory sugars. They also have some of the highest protein from animal sources that exist and have more calories per cup than almost any other food on the market. My highly active and athletic dogs need a diet that can be fine-tuned to their needs. And with Munster, I can choose from over 3,000 custom additive combinations. More calories means less food, means less waste if you catch my drift. But one of the best things about Munster for me is the convenience of their auto ship feature. Where else can you buy custom dog kibble that's made fresh to order and mixed and shipped right to your door? Nowhere. So be sure to use my code if you want to give it a try. It's MALLIGATORMOM35 and this will get you 55% off of your first custom bag. So head over to MunsterMilling.com today and you will never buy another store brand bag again. So contrary to popular belief, I'm actually not superhuman and sometimes life shows up on my doorstep and that happened to me this week when I started feeling pretty lousy on the 5th. So um, I've been fevered and not feeling well for this entire week. And so I organically just kind of came up with today's video idea, which is what do you do when you're really just too sick to get out of bed and you have all these dogs to take care of and the high drive dogs no, nonetheless, um, what do you do? So I figured I would just share with you guys some things that I did this week to help get me through the week and get the dogs through the week when you're not feeling well. All right, so you guys know me. You know that I'm gonna have an honest conversation with you guys and I'm gonna tell you like it is. And I think that a lot of people actually need to hear this because a lot of people almost need permission um, or, or for someone to say that this is okay. So let me just go ahead and say it for all of you if you're struggling with this. Um, this week when I was not feeling well, I fully admit that my dogs spent a lot of time in their crate. They just did. They spent the majority of their days in their crate. And that's just the truth. And I don't apologize for that. I'm not trying to, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna plea for any justification for that or, or explain that away or anything because I don't see a problem with it. And, um, I think that it's actually the responsible thing to do because when I'm down, when I'm sick and I'm not feeling well, what that means for the dogs is that all of that structure, all of that predictability, their potty times, their play time, their meal time, all of that, that structure and routine goes away because I'm down. I mean, I was, I was really sick. Um, and when all of that structure and routine goes away, then my dogs being the kinds of dogs that they are and what they are and how they behave can get a little unruly, can get a little naughty, honestly, if they, if they aren't being fulfilled, if they are bored, then that oftentimes manifests into what most people would consider bad behavior in the house, which I also don't have the time or the desire to deal with when I'm not feeling well. So in order for me to cap that and keep control of that, and also take care of myself, I put my dogs away. They just go in their crate and that's okay. And if you're struggling with feeling like, oh, I have to get up, I have to play with my dog, he needs exercise, he needs this, he needs that, I'm gonna have to take him for his walk, but I'm, stop that. Stop doing that to yourself. Your dog is gonna be just fine, I promise. Put your dog in his crate and get into bed and 
feel better and take care of yourself. So I know that a lot of people struggle with that. Struggle with that. I struggled with that myself um, with Riot being the first time. I literally remember getting out of bed with, you know, throwing up and not feeling well, being real sick and feeling like I still had to go into the garage and do his training sessions as a puppy because I felt like he shouldn't miss them or he can't or it's going to... And I look back on that now like, what a fool? Like, what an idiot? Why was I thinking that that was some kind of hard line in the sand or deal breaker to the kind of dog he was going to be if I was sick for a few days and he just had to be in a crate, you know, like anyway, if you're struggling with that, this is me giving you permission to just let that go. Let that go. If you're not feeling well, put your dog in a fucking crate and don't worry about it. Um, so yeah. Another thing that I do is make sure that I offer my dogs interactive toys. So stuff like this or a Kong filled with peanut butter. <laughs> right, come here. Come here. Come here. If you want it. You've been waiting, I know. Good boy. Uh, a Kong filled with peanut butter. Anything that's going to be keeping their mind occupied uh, helps with that boredom while they're in their crate, spending that extra crate time. Um, or, you know, just while they're out in the house, just something to keep them from being naughty in the house. I would rather them chew on a Kong or this peanut butter filled marrow bone or whatever, rather than chewing on my shoes or my furniture or running in circles and pacing or, or you know, doing those behaviors that manifest when your dog gets bored. So give them interactive toys to keep them busy. Another thing you might want to consider if you are really, really sick or if you know you're going to be down for like an extended period of time is to just go ahead and board your dogs. You know, I wondered to myself when I was not feeling well this week, if I didn't have my husband and my kids to help take care of the dogs and keep them on their routine and schedule and make sure they're getting fed and going potty and everything, um, what would I do? Like, I really was too sick to have gotten up and really provided their essentials for them. So I was thinking to myself, what would I do? No brainer. I would have just called Global Canine, had them come pick up the dogs, and had my dogs boarded for the week. So if that's the position you're in, then go ahead, make that call so that you can get to bed, rest up, and feel better. Okay. <laughs> so what I want you guys to take from this video is that it is okay to prioritize yourself. I think a lot of times when we are a committed owner to dogs like this, it's very easy to put their own needs ahead of ours. And, you know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But when you're sick, you're really not doing them any favors. So it's okay from time to time, give yourself the permission to go ahead and put them in their crate, um, send them away to be boarded. Maybe they get extra chew toys and things that they don't normally get access to. All of those things are really okay. You're, you're not going to be sick, you know, in a predictable way that's going to create any kind of structure or expectation on the dog's part. So go ahead and just feed into that. Let it go. Don't guilt trip yourself over them spending extra time in their crate. Don't guilt trip yourself over having to send them away if that's where you've found yourself. These things are okay. Just go ahead and focus on yourself and get well. I know firsthand how important it is to have access to a professional trainer. It is the only reason that I've been successful with my Belgian Malinois. If it weren't for Courtney Robbins at Global Canine Protection Services, I would have missed out on discovering the Belgian Malinois breed and a hobby that I not only thoroughly enjoy, but that has literally become a full-time hobby and changed the trajectory of my life. I'm very lucky to have a trainer that makes herself available to me all hours of the day or night. But I also know that most of us simply aren't in that position. Many very legitimate obstacles can get in the way of you connecting with a trainer. It could be your work schedule. It could be financial obligations. It could be the simple geography of where you live. Maybe you don't have a good trainer in your area. This is why I absolutely love the community that Robert Cabral is building through his website, robertcabral.com. He has hours and hours of video lessons on everything from puppy basics for beginners all the way through advanced obedience work. But I recently discovered my favorite part of becoming a member. 
Every week, Robert sits down for live members only Q&A, which means you have an opportunity to talk to Robert via the live chat with just a handful of other members. It's an incredible opportunity to capture his attention and get in-depth answers to your questions, something most people are paying over $100 an hour to do in person. So head over to robertcabral.com and use code MALLIGATORMOM to save 10% at checkout. And maybe I'll see you in the members-only live chat.